Hello and welcome to the Big Glasgow Comic Page interviews Jack Jester. I'm James Taylor. And I'm Jack Jester. Right, welcome Jack. Um, you're here alongside artist Frank Quietly. He'd done Jupiter's Legacy and the All-Star Superman. How are you enjoying the event here so far? It's good, it's good. I did it last week, uh, last year as well and it was uh, a bit of a kind of step outside my comfort zone. I'm not a massive, massive comic fan. So the last time I was here I thought, I'm not too sure what to expect but the effort folk put into the costumes blew my mind, so um, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with Ian um, from like primary one to we left high school, um, so it's good to see that he's organising this whole event and it's doing well. You've been a wrestler for many years now, how many is it exactly? Uh, I started when I was 15, um, <coughs> pardon me, so this year will be my, my 13th year, so it, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that it's been that long. Um, sometimes it feels long, sometimes it feels like it was yesterday, but I remember the day I started training, like it was yesterday. Uh, so, you know, the fact that it was 13 years ago is mind-blowing, to be honest. So, like, you say you've been a wrestler for 13 years, so which wrestler most influenced you throughout your childhood of like, watching wrestling, being at wrestling and so on? Um, without a, a question, is uh, Mick Foley. Mick Foley was my guy, he was the only the only person ever to make me completely invest myself in somebody, you know, like, he made me laugh, cry, he made me nervous, he made me, you know, like, I, when this guy was on TV, I would not miss it, so uh, I had the, uh, when, I, when I was young, maybe 17, 18, I did a show with him, I was on first, Mick Foley was on last, um, we had very, very little interaction because it was just the nature of the, the, the show. But um, it's it's kind of it's crazy to think that from then I was this mega fan in November this year. We're doing the SECC and Mick Foley's hosting the whole thing. So um, you know it's like you know it's, it's come full circle. When I was when I was at school, my goal, my my dream was to see Mick Foley live, whether it was at the very very back of a hundred thousand seater or you know a, a book signing. Um, so you know, thirteen years on to be actually doing a show where, where he's hosted it's it's crazy it's really really good you said about Mick Foley being at ICW Fear and Loving 8 at the SCCC that's like a massive massive booking for like Mark Dallas as a whole and the whole ICW roster so how do you think it will impact ICW as a whole the thing is ICW does well without imports or without you know famous faces so I think it's, it's only going to add to the show um, obviously, we've taken Dallas has taken a massive jump from the Barrowlands so far has been their biggest venue, so that's sixteen hundred seats to the SECC, which is you know five ish. So I mean, I think it's it's not we need it to sell out, but you know he'll Dallas is good for rewarding the fans for being loyal by giving them something that they don't expect, like Hardcore Holly, for example. Dallas never announced that, never never spoke about it. And when he came out, folk just lost their minds because that's the the, the age group, same as me. I used to watch him every week on you know, Raw and SmackDown and stuff like that. So when his music hit and folk didn't expect him to be there, it's just a wee, a wee thank you from us. You know, Thanks for being loyal. Lose your mind. Basically, Dallas was running shows in Mary Hill for a couple of years, maybe one a year. I was all-star at the time. Um, I was wrestling under the name Scotland's Lee Thomas. I wore a kilt, waved a Scotland flag. I was, you know, I wasn't happy, but I was, I was busy. So, when the time came to leave, I, I contacted Dallas with this idea. He says, "Let's run an adult show." I've got this this idea based on BDSM fetish bondage. There's, no, there's nobody else I can do it. And he's like, "No, nah, I'm done. I don't do it anymore. Just one more show. Run one more show. If it doesn't work, then that's it." And you know, to his credit, he ran one more show. It did work. I mean, at the time there were maybe like 13 folk in the crowd, something like that. The next time there was 40, then there was 60. So we were like, 60 folk, this is this is mental. So, I mean, to think that we thought 60 folk was great, and then we sold out um, Apollo 23, we sold out the uh, Classic Grand, the Garage, the Pitch House in Edinburgh, the ABC, the Barrowlands, so we need to sell out the uh, the SECC, which I'm I'm so confident we will. But it's just it's just progress, and you know, like I think folk 
the, the reason it's busy because folk come to see the show, they're impressed and they bring folk back. You know, they'll say, you need to see this show. If you're not a wrestling fan, it doesn't matter. Come and see this show, you'll enjoy it. So when the, uh, the opportunity for Drew to come back, you know, it was uh, a massive thing. And the thing was, it was me, me and Dallas knew about it. Nobody else did. Now, the boys didn't know they were coming back. None of the wrestlers, none of the fans. So we literally smuggled Drew into the country. And then he hid for two days in his room. Because like, in air, like he's, everybody knows who he is. So it just took one guy to, to spot him, put it on Facebook, two and two together, he's coming back. So Drew locked himself in his room for two days. You know, the, the first time he was back in years, you know, and he was desperate to go party, but he had to like, lock himself in. So by the time the lights went out and came back on, I was a nervous wreck. He was a nervous wreck. And if you watch it, like I, I, I break down, like I, you know, it, it was like months and months of planning. And just to hear that reaction, we thought we've done it. We've actually done it. You know, like, we've, we've managed to keep it a secret. You've come out. We got the reaction we needed, and uh, and folk just went nuts. And I, I, I had tears rolling in my face. And he was so because it was just good to see Drew in an environment again where he was, you know, he had something in his eyes for years at WWE. He had, he had the good job. And he had the working for the best company, but he wasn't happy. You know what I mean? And to see a guy back, you know, the veins in his neck were sticking, his eyes were burning, he was shaking, he had goosebumps. Like to see a guy finally get that big injection of adrenaline again, it was it was amazing for me to see. Um, and obviously from then we you know we kinda of ticked over and built the story for the Battlelands, which is the, the, the biggest thing I've done and, and drew to his credit as well. I mean he's done WrestleMania, he's he's one of the belts, but he that's to this day that's the biggest thing he's, he's ever done as well because we put everything into that. Absolutely everything. So in the Battlelands pulled off, you know, it was, it was a proud moment for both of us. On May the 30th, there was ICW had its first under-18s event as part of the Clutha Trust Festival. I was there myself and I thought it was a pretty great show, but I was wanting to know what you felt of it. Obviously, you don't just do ICW, you do all these other promotions, so it's not much different. But from an ICW viewpoint, what was it like? I mean, it was different. I mean, I, I wrestle for you know many, many you know family organisations, but for ICW, to, I mean, when we started, there was kids there, Mary Hill Community Centre. They shouldn't have been there because it was the product was exactly the same. There was blood, there was violence, bad language. But the thing that folk don't realise, just because the kids can't come to the shows, these kids watch on demand. They watch the documentaries. They know who I am. They know who Grado is. They know who Dallas is. So. For that one night to, you know, allow them to come to us, it was good. It was, it was, it was different. Um, and the weird thing was, I had, a, I'd actually bumped into a guy in a pub a few months ago, who works for the Clutha Trust, and he was asking, "Can I do something?" I said, "Sure, man. I'll, I'll try and figure something out." So for us to be asked to do that show was, it was good for us. Um, but it was, I mean, it's, it's still, it's always strange for us to walk out there and have to realise that like, we need to try and calm this down a bit, you know, we can't, you know, we can't go full on because there is, there's a baby in a pram, you know, there's a wee five-year-old kid there, but it was good, I mean, we enjoyed it, you know, it was a kind of a laid-back, easy day for us, and, you know, like, to see our regular fans standing with their wee brothers and sisters and their nephews and nieces and their sons and their daughters, you know, it was a day that they could all come and enjoy and, you know, just take it easy, it was a, it was a charity show. You know what I mean? It was just, it was there to be enjoyed, not to be criticised or, you know, picked apart. So, I would like, I would like at least a yearly event where kids can come. Ideally, twice a year. You were saying just before we started that you're doing training tomorrow, and that is for the GPWA. Yeah. And I just want you to kind of talk about, about that yourself, if you want to let me know some things. Um, but well, we started this this school with a, a different outlook, so we never had an, an open door policy. We had the idea that we were going to take intakes of, you know, 18 to 20 folk, um, and it was eight weeks, a structured programme of eight weeks. So by the end of that eight weeks, we can tell whether you're trainable or you're not. It sounds harsh, but if by eight weeks you can't take a back bump or do a forward roll, we know that you're not really up for this. So instead of bringing you back every single week and just taking your money and taking your money with no intention of getting you anywhere, we thought, you know, be fair. Eight weeks will prove whether you can do it or not. If we don't feel you can, we'll shake your hand and say, thanks for doing it, but 
we're not going to put you through. If you do make it through, you make the main class. So we started off with three hours on a Sunday, and that was it. And now we've got the whole the whole day Sunday. We've got Tuesday, we've got Thursday, we've got two end tapes coming in, so it's become full time within six months. And we've found some fantastic talent, really, really fantastic. Um, you know, everybody who joins, we appreciate them coming. If it's not for them, we'll tell them for their benefit. You know, we don't we don't believe in just taking money every week when we know we're never going to put them on a show or we're not going to push them for anything. It's not fair. You know what I mean? Like I would rather they save that money than just give it to us for no reason. Um, so it's it's getting it's getting massive, uh, and it's obviously myself, Red Lightning, Wolfgang, Lionheart, and BT Gun. So the five hours are there every single week. Um, obviously different, you know, different skills and you know different outlooks. So if you're going to start wrestling, there's no better place to start than at GPWA, um, and it's it's grown so so much. So I'm really proud of what we've done, and I'm proud of the guys who've started because you know, as I said before, there's a lot of talent there. What would you say to someone who thinks that they might be too old to start training to be a wrestler? Is that a myth, or do you think that anybody at any age could then go on to? achieve something in the wrestling industry? It depends on how hard you want to work. You know, you could be 16 and come to training for 10 years and, you know, call it in and be lazy and eventually get a match 10 years later. Or you could come in at, you know, 25, 26, 30 and bust your balls and make sure that you want to get somewhere. So I don't believe there's a, you know, an age, an age gap. Obviously, you know, the younger you are, the more beneficial it is. But... If you start at 35, you know you've got less time. So you want to show up. If you've got a good body, you know, good promo skills, you want to work hard, then there's no reason why you're any different to somebody that's 15, 16. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of guys, the problem that we have is guys calling up saying, oh, you know, I'm overweight or I'm too skinny or I'm not very fit. I'll, I'll take six months to train. Why? Like, just join now. This will help you lose weight. This will help you get fit. This will help you get bigger. You know, why wait six months and then come? That's six months wasted. Join now. Wrestling's about, you know, wrestling's always been about, you know, different shapes and sizes. I mean, there's no rules. You look at Rey Mysterio. I mean, the tiniest guy I've ever met, he's, he's tiny, absolutely tiny. And then guys like, you know, the giant haystacks. Was he an athlete? No. He was a 45 stone big massive fat guy but he also happened to be one of the biggest stars on the planet you know it just it doesn't matter you know if you build it right you know all right you can't do a moonsault who cares if you can't do a forward roll or a back bump that's an issue but you know we don't all have to do moonsaults you know what i mean it's just build it work on your, your strengths you know cover your weaknesses but you want to start wrestling i don't care what age you are don't make that an excuse join up Pay your money, get your head down, try hard, because the only person stopping you is yourself.